The refrigerant gas is compressed from low to high pressure inside the compressor. The compressor can be compared to a pump that conveys vapor in the refrigeration circuit. Usually, the compressors are driven electrically, connected to the motor via belt. Refrigeration compressor is generally a reciprocating type. Larger systems have multiple cylinders with an unloader system using the suction pressure as its signal. The vapor is sucked by the downward stroke of the piston from the low pressure side of the evaporator discharge. The upward movement of the piston compresses the vapor which leaves the compressor at a different pressure and the extra energy applied on it causes strong superheating of the vapor. Oil Separator the high-pressure superheated refrigerant vapor coming out of the compressor will go to the oil separator to remove oil traces from the refrigerant. An oil separator ensures oil return to the compressor oil sump. It prevents compressor breakdown caused by lack of lubrication, increases compressor operating life, protects against liquid hammer in the compressor. The oil separator maintains a high coefficient of condenser and evaporator performance by almost completely removing oil deposits from their exchange surfaces. The oil separator consists of internal baffle plats arranged along the path of refrigerant. As the refrigerant flows through the separator, the baffles will rapidly reduce the gas speed and create the conditions required for the separation of the oil from the refrigerant. As the oil is heavier than the refrigerant, it gets collected at the bottom of the separator. The bottom portion is provided with outlet pipe, which is connected to the suction of oil compressor crankcase. There is a floating operation needle valve arrangement, which opens the valve once set level of oil reaches inside the separator. The bottom of the separator may be provided with permanent magnet, which will hold all the metallic impurities, which may stuck the needle valve or can damage compressor internal parts. In a typical refrigerant condenser, the refrigerant enters the condenser in a superheated state. It is first desuperheated and then condensed by rejecting air to an external medium. The refrigerator may leave the condenser as a saturated or subcooled liquid, depending upon the temperature of the external medium and design of the condenser. The most common type of condenser used in marine refrigeration systems is shell and tube type condenser. The refrigerant flows through the shell while water flows through the tubes in single to four passes. A separate tank which will act as a receiver can be integrated with the condenser. There might be a vent connecting the receiver to the condenser for a smooth drainage of liquid refrigerant. The shell also acts as a receiver. Further, the refrigerant also rejects heat to the surroundings from the shell. The most common type is horizontal shell type. After passing through the condenser, the liquid refrigerant then goes through the filter, whose main purpose is to remove the moisture from the refrigerant. Its other important function is to remove fine particles that can possibly block the expansion valve. A sight glass is also provided in the pipeline, which allows the operator to ensure that it is only liquid refrigerant and not a liquid gas mixture going to the expansion valves. On some designs, a water indicator is incorporated. Expansion Device Pressure in the receiver is much higher than the pressure in the evaporator because of the compressor. Pressure increase that has occurred prior to condenser. To reduce pressure to the same level as the evaporator, a device must be inserted to carry out this process, which is called throttling or expansion. This device is a throttling or expansion valve. The most common type used on ship's refrigeration system is a thermostatic expansion valve. It consists of a diaphragm, which is connected to the spring of the valve stem and the valve. The upper portion of the diaphragm is connected to the capillary tube, whose one end is connected to the bulb attached to the outlet of the evaporator containing small amount of liquid in a part of the bulb. The rest of the bulb, the capillary tube, and the space above the diaphragm in the valve housing is charged with saturated vapor at a pressure corresponding to the temperature at the bulb. If the temperature of the evaporator outlet is more than normal, it indicates that the refrigerant is superheated due to lack of refrigerant. 
The liquid in the bulb is temperature sensitive and it will exert pressure on the diaphragm, opening the valve and allowing more refrigerant to go to the starved evaporator. Evaporator Evaporator is a phase change heat exchanger which consists of pipes arranged in loop and a fan to supply the low temperature from the evaporator to the surroundings. The refrigerant inside it will evaporate because the heat will be transmitted from the refrigerated hold to the evaporator. As the incoming liquid travels in the evaporator, it immediately cooled down to the evaporating temperature, which is also due to low pressure created by the compressor suction, with the result that the surrounding air from the hold at a higher temperature is able to cool down and transmit its warmth to the evaporator. This cool surrounding air is further spread in the room by using a fan. If you have any questions or suggestions, Please drop your comments below and we'll get back to you at the earliest. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Marine Insight channel and press the bell icon to get notified when we post such amazing videos. Please like, comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.